Hello and welcome to Comic Talk, the once a week segment on my channel where I get together with you and I talk about comics. Today's issue is Action Comics issue 983. Let's get into it. Now quickly just pulling up onto the screen, both of the variant cover options you would have had at your local comic book store, we can see that they're both very different in nature. For the one, we have a comic cover with Superman and Steel floating in what looks to be some sort of a void, while on the other we have a much more complex battle scene with Supergirl, Steel, the Eradicator, Superman, Cyborg Superman. It's just a regular punch up right there on the cover. I chose the punch-up because it looks more like a renaissance painting than anything else. Don't ask me why, but I just liked it better. Now this issue picks up pretty much where the last one left off. They're all outside. Lex Luthor, Superman, Supergirl, Super Dash Man, Steel, and Superwoman are all joining Superman outside of the fortress while Lois and John are still in the fortress and they haven't yet made their escape. Now before any of the fighting begins, General Zod makes a little petition to Superman where he's like, listen, spare your friends' lives and just give me the Phantom Zone projector. And Superman obviously is having none of it because he doesn't want Zod to release any of the criminals in the Phantom Zone onto planet Earth because that would surely mean the destruction of all human life on the planet. Secretly, General Zod actually wanted Superman to say, no, I'm not going to give you the Phantom Zone projector, because that meant a fight. And we all know General Zod loves a fight. Now, when Superman declines Zod's offer to just give him the Phantom Zone projector, Zod flies into Superman at super speed, bashes through the walls of the fortress, and now they're in the fortress. And Superman is still blind, and he doesn't want Zod to get his hands on the Phantom Zone projector, so he doesn't want to give Zod a chance to look around. He also notices that Lois and John are still in the fortress, and he doesn't want Zod to find out that he's got a family. Now, while in the fortress and Zod is up close and personal face to face with Superman, it's then he realizes that Superman is blind. He knows that Superman's not fighting the way he usually would, and he realizes he's blind by looking at the blank stare in his eyes, and he's going to take advantage of that. Now, while all this is happening on the inside of the Fortress of Solitude between Superman and General Zod, outside, the superheroes and the supervillains are beginning to square off against one another. So, we see Supergirl versus Cyborg Superman. We see the Eradicator versus Superwoman. We see Blanc versus Super Dash Man. We see Lex Luthor fighting Mongol. And we see Metallo fighting Steel. It's a regular fisticuffs bust up outside the Fortress. Now back in the fortress, it's important to remember that Lois and John are still there and Superman is well aware of this fact because Kellex has not yet had the proper amount of time to evacuate them. Truth be told, this entire issue and last issue, the time frame in comic time combined that it's taken will probably be around five to eight minutes. So there just hasn't been time to get them to safety. Now because this is the current situation, Superman is just pounding and pounding and pounding on Zod, trying to make him go down to give Lois and John more time to get to safety, to keep Zod away from them. Zod doesn't know they exist, and Superman wants to keep it that way. Here's the thing, Zod won't go down because he's Zod. He's a general. He's learned how to take a beating, and Superman, if you're a Superman fan, you know that he's always holding back. He's never giving it 100%. However, he is still giving Zod a big beating, and Zod still isn't going down. At this time, Zod also goes, wait a minute, I know you're using those extra senses, you've locked onto my heartbeat. And so Zod's like, let's just take that right out of the picture. And he emits an incredibly high pitched sound out of his vocal cords, which deafens Superman and just, just kills his eardrums and Superman goes down. Now with Superman down on the ground and Zod no longer emitting that loud sound from his vocal cords, it's quiet in the fortress. And because it's quiet, Zod hears Lois and John trying to evacuate. And he looks with his x-ray vision and he sees them and he's like, what? Superman's got a family? After all these years? And I didn't know? He sees what he presumes is Lois and John trying to make their escape out of an escape pod, and while it's in the sky, he blasts it with his heat vision and explodes it. As far as he's concerned, he's just killed Superman's family, and he couldn't be happier. Just then, Supergirl bursts on the scene, tries to take out Zod. Zod just bats her off and knocks her out, where he goes after that and grabs the Phantom Zone projector. So now Zod has the Phantom Zone projector. He has exactly what he's wanted. At this point, the rest of the super team show up a little bit late after having all been subdued by General Zod's army of super villain assailants, 
and they're all there on the scene. Superman and his posse, Zod and his posse, Zod holding the Phantom Zone projector in his hand. And what does he do? He then proceeds to project Superman and Lex Luthor and Steel and Superwoman and Super-Man into the Phantom Zone, leaving Supergirl knocked out on the ground at his feet. And not only does he project the superheroes into the Phantom Zone, he also projects the Eradicator and the Cyborg Superman into the Phantom Zone as well. We can see here that Zod has a much bigger plan up his sleeve than the Cyborg Superman could have ever imagined. So now, with the entirety of the Superman family, save for Supergirl, who is still knocked out in the Fortress of Solitude, floating in the void of the Phantom Zone, what looks to be knocked out at the moment, and General Zod is still in the Fortress of Solitude with access to all of Superman's Kryptonian technology and with the Phantom Zone projector itself in hand, what are his plans? What is he going to do? Now quickly before I bring this video to a close, I also want to point out that I not only read all the Superman titles and the Justice League titles, I read pretty much every title that has a super in the front aside from Super-Man because I don't know that character and I can't afford to read every single comic. However, I do read Supergirl and they didn't put Supergirl, if you'll notice, in the Phantom Zone and I think that that makes sense because in Supergirl comics, she just got out of the Phantom Zone with Batgirl. She's already had her whole ordeal in there so it wouldn't make any sense to have her go back into the Phantom Zone and then, you know, she could just, she could help them get out of the Phantom Zone pretty much right away if she was there and that wouldn't help the story. The Superman and the rest of the Superman family need some challenges while Supergirl is going to face her own challenges back in the real world with General Zod. I think he's got plans for her. There's a reason why he didn't pick her up and toss her in there as well. Now, I like this issue for a number of reasons. For one, it's a Superman comic, so I obviously like it for that reason. I like the artwork in it. I love the story that they're telling, having all of these super baddies together facing off against the Superman family. My favorite part is actually seeing General Zod come to the realization that Superman has a family. I think that that's really, really cool that he realizes that Superman is domesticated. And then he also just tries to kill them right off the bat. We get a really good view of what General Zod's character is like in this issue. And with that, I must bid you farewell because that is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you might have in the comment section down below. Subscribe so you never miss another video. And I will see you in the next episode of Comic Talk. Bye for now.